Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of the City of Lenore for Tuesday, January the 2nd, 2024. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. For our first meeting of the new year, we're glad to, to have you here. Hard to say 2024, I've been saying 2023 for so long, it's good, got to change. But uh, we welcome you here tonight. Uh, we have several things going on on our agenda. As we normally do, we will start out with a moment of silence and we will remain <clears throat> standing for our pledge. Before we go to our uh, moment of silence and pledge, we'd like for you to keep several things in your thoughts and prayers for us this evening. Uh, as many of you probably knew, there was a police officer that was killed in Greensboro over this past week. Uh, Sergeant Dale Nix of the Greensboro Police Department was, was killed, and we would like to keep uh, his family in our thoughts and prayers. Please keep them and pray for them. Also, uh, we lost two of our uh, really wonderful members of our community over the last week, uh, Mrs. Sylvia Green. Sylvia was uh, one of the finest people I knew, a historian from the Freedman community, and, and Miss Sylvia was an artist and just uh, loved by everybody. She will be sorely missed in our community. Uh, wonderful service we held for her. And Miss Martha Wilson, uh, wife of Hugh Wilson. Martha also passed away this past week. Martha has been involved in our community for many, many years, and. Uh, well loved and respected in our community. So please keep those families also in your thoughts and prayers uh, during this, these coming weeks as they move forward. So now, if you will, please join me. Rise for our <laughs> moment of silence and remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As we get started, we have uh, first we have a matter scheduled for public hearing. Before we go to that, I would like to uh, say a thank you, some thank yous to our city staff and for so many things you know this has been a wonderful christmas season uh so many beautiful decorations we've had so many wonderful comments uh and i want to say thank you to uh all of our staff and everybody who did such a great job decorating and downtown lenore is uh it was like a winter uh christmas wonderland and people really have enjoyed it uh we had so many wonderful comments uh people calling and uh sending uh, information and all that <coughs> I was tell a quick one. We had I had four teachers who taught here at uh, William Lenore uh, for many many years. They were retired. They were downtown the other uh, evening having dinner together, and they called me on the phone and said, "We just want to tell you how much we love downtown Lenore and how beautiful it is." And all four of them got on the phone and, and were telling me, and I was so tickled that they did and, and enjoyed it. One of them even had their picture made with one of the angel wings and used it for her Christmas card. So <laughs> it was kind of fun and exciting to, uh, to see that. But uh, thank you all, staff, for your great job of, of doing a wonderful job with that. Yeah, good round of applause for that. <laughs> thank you. All right, we will move on then to matters scheduled for public hearings this evening. We have a public hearing tonight to consider a conditional zoning district. This is CZ10. It's requested by Mr. Earl Ed, Edward Earl Booker, property located at 2035 uh, Walt Arney Road, North Carolina, PIN number 27582049789, subject to the following special conditions, which are one through seven listed below and based on the consistency statement as listed below. The recommendation from our city uh, staff is the council adopt the proposed ordinance as presented. The special uh, conditions are one or concept plan on that. Uh, where is Hannah? Hannah, I'm gonna let you come up and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Williams is our planning director and I'm going to let you talk about the special conditions on if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. Do we want to have um, her sworn? 
Uh, probably should, shouldn't we? Would yeah, you might. swear in our planning director? <coughs> yeah, we this? might want to go ahead and open the, pub the uh, public hearing. Okay. And then, and the then have public the hearing is open, and we will then uh, uh, swear in our planning director, Hannah Williams, to give you the special conditions for this uh, request. Uh, I apologize. I was expecting that you were going to read the conditions first. <laughs> I understand. Which I can do. Um, but if you want me to, I will. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll see <laughs> who's uh, whose voice has, has enough. <laughs> we can we can tag team if we need to. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, tonight before you is a conditional zoning ordinance uh, that would permit the expansion of a commercial business um, down on Walt Arney Road. This is actually an amendment to a special use district. Um, and uh, I'm going to give a quick refresher about what a special use district is. Um, it's a retired zoning tool that we no longer use. Um, it, uh, it allowed for zoning ordinance exceptions uh, through a combination of a rezoning and a special use permit. Um, but since 2014, Lenore uses conditional zoning instead in place of SUD. Um, and approved special use districts remain on the Lenore zoning map as legacy uh, conditional zonings. Uh, but amendments to them require a full conversion to a conditional zone where we provide an ordinance and a site plan that get recorded with the Register of Deeds. Um, so that's what this is to tonight. Um, and uh, I also want to iterate that uh, conditional zoning is a legislative uh, decision and it's based on what you think is best. It's not based on factual evidence, findings of fact, and that kind of thing. Um, so we're talking about 2035 Walt Arney Road. It's zoned R9, uh, but it's developed as a commercial property with a special use district from uh, 1997. Um, that allowed for a 2,500 square foot commercial building. Uh, the applicant is seeking to uh, build a second commercial building on the lot, which requires an amendment to his current approval. The expansion is what's requiring this um, uh, uh, amendment. Um, so the question to answer tonight is should uh, this commercial property expand in a resident residentially zoned area? Um, the staff and planning board uh, support the proposal to expand uh, but with certain conditions um, which are on the agenda. Um, but I'll give you some history on the property. Long ago, the previous homeowner at 2025 Walt Arney Road, the neighboring property, uh, he ran his business in a shed behind his house. Um, it was a cabinetry business and it was there for more than 40 years until a fire destroyed the shed. And then um, he, uh, he built his business in the building that's currently on the property. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> It was specifically named, the use named in the special use district is a cabinet built, uh, cabinet shop, and um, that's the only permitted use there. Uh, the commercial property has changed hands many times since 1997, and uh, it's been more than just a cabinet shop. Uh, the current owner uses it as a um, CNC machine repair business, uh, where he is the sole employee. Um, and he proposes to expand into a second business for, uh, or a second building, excuse me, for more storage. Um, and he can expand what he does on the site. Um, and uh, as stated, uh, staff and the planning board support the expansion of the business um, with uh, the following conditions, uh, which I will talk about now. Um, first, uh, it's being passed with the concept plan that's found in your agenda packet. Um, as well as in the staff report. Um, and uh, this is eligible for variances and modification as well. Um, uh, the permitted uses are all the uh, uses permitted within the R9 zoning district, as well as office use, um, and light manufacturing, and boutique artisan manufacturing. <coughs> Heavy manufacturing is not permitted by this ordinance. Um, we also have um, conditions regarding design. Uh, designs, excuse me, <coughs> 
design standards laid out for industrial districts shall apply, as well as um, the following conditions. All commercial and industrial activities shall take place within the buildings. Outdoor storage, truck parking, garbage collection, loading and unloading shall not be visible from abutting streets. All of the following, in addition to uh, utility equipment and other similar functions, shall be incorporated into the overall design of the building. Non-enclosed areas shall be permanently defined and screened as well as conform to materials and colors on the building. All lighting shall be fully cut off and shielded so as to eliminate light spillover onto adjacent <coughs> residential properties. Six parking spaces are required located to the side and rear of the buildings as shown on the concept plan. And uh, there's a consideration for buffer. Uh, the tree line along the rear property boundary shall remain and landscaping must be replaced if damaged. The buffer in front of the proposed secondary building shall consist of evergreen trees screening away from the adjacent single family home known as 2025 Walt Arney Road. The buffer must meet the following specification. Trees and shrubs used in a buffer strip shall be species which reach a, a height of six feet within two years. A combination of two or more species may be permitted provided that at least 50% of the trees will reach six feet within two years and such trees will be evenly distributed along the buffer strip. Any change of ownership or occupancy does not negate the requirements of this section. Um, we also have a con condition for signage, which is the same in all residential districts um, uh, for commercials and residential. This site is permitted the following signs with uh, an approved zoning permit, one monument sign not to exceed 32 square feet in copy area and six feet in height, a uh, building mounted wall signage up to eight square feet, and um, electronic message boards are prohibited. Um, I'll read the consistency statement. I'll, so. Okay, I'll wait okay. for that then. All right, uh, the consistency statement is the proposed conditional zoning district is consistent with the land use policy concepts <laughs> in the comprehensive plan. Plans that call for industrial development in appropriate areas and increased requirements for landscaping and new developments, generally requiring landscaping incentives, both the desire for the for the, a property to look more aesthetically appealing, but also ensuring that the character of the property does not interrupt the pre-existing residential and cultural context previously developed in the area. On the City of Lenore future land use map, this area calls for high dens density residential wherein there are several single family neighborhoods as well as a few mobile home parks. This use in the grand scheme of all properties in this area of Lenore does not hardly affect the intended uses that were bound for this parcel and surrounding parcels. It would be challenging to put multifamily high density homes on this property given its size, but additionally it is surrounded by uses that are consistent with the future land use map, including a park to the east of the property. That's the consistency statement. All right, anything All right. else you want to add to that? Um, sure, uh, basically this is, um, uh, the ordinance states that light manufacturing um, and artisan manufacturing should be allowed here, as well as uh, general office use. Um, and uh, the proposed ordinance, it takes into account uh, buffering, uh, lighting, signage, and, and parking. Um, it just, is, kind of takes into account everything about um, uh, developing a commercial property that the special use district did not. So uh, okay. we just think that is a common sense uh, modification. And so that sums up um, the ordinance and I can answer any more ordinance questions that you might have or concept plan questions. The applicant um, Earl Booker is here tonight and he can maybe answer specific questions about the mm -hmm. business. Um, but otherwise, uh, that's all I have for you. Okay, thank you, Anne. Any, um, anyone else would like to address the council <coughs> concerning, we are in the uh, public hearing sections. Anyone would like to come forward and address the council? This is the time to do so. Okay, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and turn it over to council for any questions and or uh, motions to bring forth. There's, there's no substantial change in operations, correct? 
it's just storage for existing operations. Yes. And the building seems to be similarly sized to what's already there, I think. Just a little bit larger. Yes. Yeah. You're okay. exactly right. Yeah. Okay. The building is meant to be for storage so he can hold more machine on site right. than he currently can. Right. And all business activity will be within the buildings. Yes, that's one of the conditions of approval right. okay. that everything would take place inside. So, but if the property is sold, it's restricted to the light light manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And what? And what? What? Um, the other one is boutique and artisan manufacturing. It's just a, a smaller scale. It, um, you know, think about uh, pottery or small scale furniture, that kind of thing. Right. Um, but if the property were to be sold, it would still have to meet all the conditions listed okay. here. Right. Everything would have to take place inside. Parking and loading would have to meet the ordinance as well. Signage, that kind of thing. Is there is there a restriction on the number of parking with this? Um, six. Six. The six. Six is what's required. Yeah. Okay. Towards the side and rear, not in front. And this property is not... Um, does not front Walt Arnie Road, if I'm No, correct. no. It looks to be um, a pretty extended drive going yeah, into Yeah, it. it's kind of like the driveway's like a long pole that borders that residential house and, and the Walt Arnie Super at, yeah, and then kind of opens up in a L shape. Mm -hmm. um, on one side is a uh, metal building church, um, and then kind of on the, on the other end is a, uh, backs up to a mobile home park, and then the directly East is um, a park, uh, Whit Whitnell Optimist. Okay. 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 Any other questions? Okay. When you're ready, I'll entertain a, a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this uh, conditional zoning district. Okay. We have a motion from Mayor Pro Tem Stevens to, uh, for approval for the conditional zoning district CZ10. Or two two zero three five Walt Arney Road as presented. Subject to the subject to the consistency statement which we read a few minutes ago. And the special conditions. And the special conditions, yes, sir. All right. All that goes with your motion, by yes, the way. Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That is. Uh, Six. Five zip. Five. We have two council members not here tonight. Uh, council member Beal and council member Chrissy Thomas are both out tonight. They're all uh, traveling, so we will uh, wish them the best and hope they're doing will be safe. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you for that. Anna, thank you for your work on that. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda items on our agenda, uh, consisting of minutes <laughs> of the, uh, this is of the city council meeting of Tuesday, December 5th. 2023. Item B is minutes of the of closed session uh, minutes from the city council meeting of Tuesday, December 5th, 2023, as reviewed by the city attorney, the city council, and the city manager. Item C is a resolution. This is for the Division of Water Infrastructure. This is a recommendation approval of the proposed resolution accepting the stormwater planning grant offer from the Division of Water Infrastructure in the amount of 200 and $48,640 and making the applicable assurances contained therein as submitted. And item D is a resolution and symbol. This is for public works and engineering a recommendation that the council adopt the resolution to designate public works and engineering as first responders, as well as the symbol created and approved by the American Public Works Association in 2017. The symbol will be used by the City of Lenore Public Works professionals to mark vehicles, equipment, which are tags and decals, and facilities, PWFR, identifying them as public works first responders as submitted. So those are the items for our consent agenda items A through D. I'll open it up to any discussion, questions, or motion. Thank you. Make a motion that's a uh, consent agenda be <coughs> approved and submitted. Thank you. I have a motion from Council Member Purdue that the consent agenda items A through D be uh, approved as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That's unanimous. All right. We'll now move to um, an item on here for requests and petitions of citizens. This is the time that 
I guess most of y'all were here to see us tonight, so uh, we, uh, we're ready to, uh, to do that. So I will uh, open it up. Whoever would like to address the council tonight, uh, please, we do have a full agenda, so we hope that you will uh, keep your comments as brief as you possibly can, a couple of minutes. Uh, and if, if you have the same things to say, you know, hopefully you'll uh, work together on those kind of things and, and let us know about that. So I'll now open it up. If you'd like to, uh, to speak to the council, please come to the, to the podium, uh, present your name and address to us, and uh, we'll uh, entertain uh, your comments. Thank you, Mayor Gibbons and council members. My name is Lynette Ramsey and I live on Waycross Drive um, in Lenore. Thank you. Well, I have a property there, excuse me. I I'm here to address um, an incident in the Christmas parade. I had a whole lot of things. I've got all kinds of notes and things, but I just wanna to speak to you a little bit from my heart. As I was sitting back there, I was looking at that sign that said, in God we trust. And so that's who I'm trusting in tonight to help me say what I need to say and get it across. Um, I wasn't at our Christmas parade. I got a phone call later that talked about the demon float in our Christmas parade. I thought, surely <laughs> these people were joking. Um, until later I found out that we had a float in the Christmas parade that depicted um, some, a German tradition called Krampus, who is a half goat, half demon, who chases children. Most of you have seen this. I, I know I've showed it to some of you, and the rest of you have probably seen that. What even astounded me further is when I t heard parents tell me that people from this float, not only did they have uh, somebody chained, a child chained, they had people chasing little children out in the crowds in the Christmas parade. I was astounded because as a parent, I don't celebrate Halloween. That's my choice. I don't take my kids to haunted houses. But if you do, that's your choice. Parents brought their kids to this Christmas parade to celebrate Christmas. They didn't bring them there to scare them, terrify them. I know a lady that has an autistic child that for weeks struggled to get that child settled down at night. I know other parents that said their children have had nightmares. This isn't, I'm not saying don't have Krampus or whatever, but parent, we should be able to have a choice of what we're gonna see. When we come to the city of Lenore, we don't wanna see demons. Krampus, if you read about who Krampus is, he takes children horrific punishments. He chains them, throws them down the river. Most of us here are members of churches. Um, I mean, how, would we allow that in our churches? I, I just, I don't understand the fact of scaring little children. I was, just for fun. One of the things though that really, really got me is that there was a lot of community debate, both internally and on social media. Um, there was a observer on Facebook, and this is what she noted. She said, a Krampus on the back of a car waving is one thing, but on a float with a chained child jumping into the crowds, purposely scaring children is another. I want to encourage you as a council. Um, I had conversations with the city manager and with other people that had to do with this, and I kept being told that it was the parade committee that makes these decisions. Ultimately, you, the city council, run the city. I mean, thank, I'm thankful for the city manager and other staff members, but ultimately they work for you. I'm gonna encourage you that you put some things in place next year and in upcoming years. In the past, you've had restrictions. Um, in 2021, I was a member of the Republican Party. I was told no political floats in the parade. Um, however, there ended up being some. I tried to follow the rules. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna address is in a lot of conversations, I was contacted by several people who spoke with a member of the city and the gentleman over the parade. And I surely hope that what he stated and what they told me he said was a complete misunderstanding because he stated that if Hamas wanted to have a float in our parade, that he would allow it. As a city of Lenore, we're better than this. The parade is supposed to be a fun, focal part of the holiday season. And I would encourage you to make that happen going forward and to remember what we're here for to celebrate the season. And there was a petition that was taken up. This was just by word of mouth by members of the local community. And I'm gonna leave that with y'all. Okay. So that you can, oh, I'm sorry, so that you can verify that. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Okay. Who else would like to address the council? Um, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey. All right. My name's Adam. I am here. Adam. Adam Hartley. Thank you. Um, I am here uh, on behalf of Wolf Moon Salt Cave, which is located down here in uh, downtown Lenore. Uh, I am not introducing myself fully because we have all had some backlash because of the parade. I'm here as a staff member of Wolf Moon and a citizen of Lenore. And I can tell you personally, I have grown up marginalized. I've been called false things. I've been harassed before, and I'm well aware of what a bully is. Whatever your faith is, I can guarantee that it does not have a clause directing you to be the instigator of harassment. A quick look at these social media feeds will show you that that is what a lot of these people believe. They, along with other people, other loud voices in our community, have falsely accused several businesses downtown, Milky Roots, Moonjoy Meadery, and the Wolf Moon Salt Cave, amongst several others in our downtown area, of sponsoring that said float. This float was private citizens. The float was unaffiliated with any business. The speaker we just heard from said she wasn't at the parade. I was. There was no Krampus chasing children. There was Krampus handing out candy, as in just about every other float that was down there. They were saying, be good, be a good child, that sort of thing. And it could come across scary, but everybody there was smiling, laughing, doing, doing what you do at a parade. So all of those accusations I have seen firsthand, I've seen defamatory remarks, I have seen the threats of violence, and not only words, but actual physical damage to some property. And we do have evidence of that. This is all because of these crusaders that started these rumors. Is this behavior to whom the root cause was instigated by those individuals and what I call crusaders, what we should tolerate? Is this who we are? Short and sweet, the facts speak for themselves. What we've heard, that there is a group that wants to censor a parade to represent our community, but the parade itself should be open to all people of all creeds and all holiday traditions. Censor censorship has not worked in the past, and it won't work in the future. Bullies bully, hurt people hurt people, and all I ask is that you, our representatives, represent all of us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to address the council? Okay. Please give your name, if you will. Good evening. My name is Nicole Flanagan. In normal circumstances, I know this would be the part where I tell you my address. But due to recent threats to local business owners regarding the topic, I hope it's okay with the council that I do not state my address. I can assure you, though, that I am a Lenore resident. Okay. And I'd be more than willing to provide my address privately. Okay, thank you. We first asked the city council to consider the seats that you sit in represent an entire community, not just one certain group or another certain group. But there are many diverse groups that call this county home. In light of the understanding that our community is not compromised of a single race, sex, religion, or political affiliation, we ask that the council consider, secondly, that those different parts that make up our home have a right to representa representation of our own traditions or beliefs in downtown Little Christmas Parade. The party we stand here opposing most certainly had plenty of representation in that parade, which was wonderful, and we honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Our only desire is for everyone in the community to experience inclusivity and feel that they have a place here and that they belong. It is neither just nor right to allow a line to be crossed in our community where one individual group is allowed to threaten, bully, or harass another group, and then pressure the council into censoring us based solely on one group's personal beliefs 
and not the beliefs or feelings of the community as a whole. We stand before the council tonight asking only that you see us and every member of, excuse me, and every other unconsidered member of its town's population as part of the community that you sit in those seats to represent. We ask plainly that you allow us to be a part of what makes Lenore unique. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to address the council? Okay, seeing no one, I'm all, we've had discussions with our city attorney. We've had Mr. Moore look into a lot of different situations for us. And I'm gonna now call Mr. Moore to, uh, to give us a statement that we have worked on. Uh, city council, the mayor and staff appreciate uh, your concerns about the Christmas parade and its participants and also the concerns, the other concerns that have been expressed here. The city, as we know, is a governmental entity. As such, it is bound by the United States Constitution, including the First Amendment. In particular, Congress, and through the 14th Amendment, the states, and thus the city, cannot limit your freedom of speech. The First Amendment is part of the reason you can come before the council and express your concerns, as you have here tonight. The city also cannot establish a religion or prohibit people from exercising or expressing their own religious beliefs. Government must accommodate all religions and cannot be hostile toward any. So since the city of Lenore organizes and sets up the Christmas parade each year, it must allow, with only limited exceptions, participation by whatever group, person, or organization that wants to participate. That includes Christian religious organizations and churches, non-Christian religious organizations, non-religious organizations, and organ organizations that are explicitly non-religious or anti-religious. And again, with only limited exceptions, the city must allow those groups that participate to express whatever message each group through its float wishes to express. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address or any questions to us at all for the evening? I do have a question. Okay, would you come, come up, yes. Cynthia? Thank you. Uh, my name we, is Cynthia Hicks, thank you. and I think a lot of people in this room know where they can find me. Um, I cannot help but agree with a lot of what they're saying. They have every right to do this. What's going to happen next year if somebody decides they want to put a stripper's float out on the parade? <laughs> Laugh if you want to. It's fine. What if somebody wants to come in with a Hamas float next year. Is that going to be okay? When does it infringe on other people? I'm asking that the council needs to have guidelines and rails in place to be able to pull together a family-friendly event, something that you can take a one-year-old to and it not scare them, uh, something that a four-year-old could go to, a six-year-old. I looked at the movie Krampus. I love horror and comedy. But a PG-13 movie is not suitable for a six-year-old, nor do I feel that it is appropriate either for a public parade where you have families coming that they may not know exactly what your content's going to be. I'm saying for the protection of small ones, there should be guidelines to this parade. Uh, Disney, which is one of the largest entertainment people in, in the US, even they have guidelines. They have Christmas parades, they have Halloween parades, but they keep their content family friendly for the audience they're looking to entertain. I would suggest that I would like to see the council put some consideration in place because it could be something very offensive and it does matter to our community. Lenore has been very proud. They've done provided beautiful parades over the years and I would think you'd want to keep them family friendly for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rohr. Was there a comment there? Um, 
Strippers are. <laughs> well, the, as I say, point. as I say, there are limitations. There are certain limitations you're allowed to put in place. Um, yeah. That would be one. There might be certain swear words you're not allowed to have. Those sorts of things. But so there are limitations that can be put in place. If the council or someone wants to get into that, we can start getting into that. That would be the council's decision or the committee's decision. Well, we certainly want to keep it as good, clean as we can, well, obviously, <laughs> for all reasons, of course. But uh, all right, is there anyone else that would like to uh, address us tonight? Council, anybody? Comments of anything? Okay. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for coming out tonight. We yeah, certainly appreciate you. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will move on with our meeting if we can. Thank exactly. you so much. <laughs> all right, we'll move on. Uh, we do not have any reports of our boards and commissions this evening. So we'll move on to the report and recommendations of the city manager, Mr. Hildebrand. Mayor, council, a couple items for information this evening. Uh, our curbside Christmas tree pickup begins or began today and goes through Friday, January 5th. So just place those at the curb and not in the street. And we'll try to get those picked up this week. at City Hall and city offices will be closed on Monday, January 15th in observance of Martin Luther King holiday. Tonight Quick we have <clears throat> yes, items of information. Leaf pickup will continue through January. Yes. We're doing three pickups around the community. I think John Hogan, I saw him somewhere. Yeah, John. We're right at, right at, at, at two right now. The second round's about complete. One more round to go. Thank you. Tonight we have one item for council action. It's a bid award for the Lenora Vehicular Wayfinding Project. As you're aware, we went back and contracted with Destination by Design out of Boone, North Carolina to provide design, bid administration, and construction oversight for our wayfinding sign project. As you recall, back in 2022, we came up with a new brand for the city. You see the sign at Smith Crossroads right now as part of that brand. Um, Staff bid this project out on October 24th, 2023. We only received two bids. Therefore, we had to rebid that project. We did that. We received two bids on December 6th. The low bidder for this project was Right Light Signs, Inc. out of Monroe, North Carolina at a low bid of $414,960. This includes, I think, 50... Here. 55... 55 signs that will go up throughout the community, directing folks to our tourism destinations. Uh, the money for this project, we had received a $250,000 grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission. We also received 50,000 from the North TDA. The rest of the money has been budgeted for this project. And so we go back and recommend you award the bid to the lowest bidder, Right Light Signs, Inc. of Monroe, North Carolina for $414,960. So for 14 the 50, or 416? 416. 416. 41460 is what the okay. bid document is. Okay, so we got, got 416. We got 416 okay. in here. Save $2,000. There you go. Cut the budget. <laughs> 414960. That's a good deal. And they have experience doing signs throughout the Southeast, and we have, uh, you can go to their website and find those signs. So. And we, we have been including that in our budget for years. Yeah. Finally yeah, getting so there. Finally getting yeah. there, so that's good. That's this good. has been a discussion we've had for a long time of, of wayfinding. So that when people come to our community that we're able to direct them to the certain areas of Lenore that we want them to, especially downtown and, and other ballparks and everything that we have in our community. So this is a great, great project and we've been uh, looking at it uh, for a good while and finally we've, we've gotten here. Plus the sign at Smith Crossroads is, was the first phase of that and we're excited about that and it's gone up really, really well. So uh, still lighting to go there on that sign, so we're very excited about all of the, we want to be a welcoming community for people to come to, and that's what that's all about uh, when you when you come here, so. And let me thank also Kaylin Horn and also John Hogan for the work on this project. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, so we appreciate that hard work from our staff for sure, that's been great. 
All right, you heard the uh, recommendations from the city manager for the uh, vehicular wayfinding project as presented, the low bid to Right Light Signs Incorporated for 414960 So I'll entertain a motion from council for approval of this bid award. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion, but before I do, I'd like to make a comment to Kaylin and to John for a great job on the sign at Smith Crossroads. It's a great look and begin. It's a great beginning of what's going to come to Lenore. So my hat's off to you guys for doing a great job there. If you haven't seen it, you need to look at Smith Crossroads. So Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this bid for our Lenore Vehicular Wayfaring Project. Wayfinding project. I mean. Thank you, sir. I have a motion from Council Member Perkins for the approval of the bid award to uh, Right Light Signs as presented. Any other discussion from Council? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Carries unanimously. Exciting times. That's great. We're glad to be moving forward with that. Okay, we'll move on then to uh, any report from our city attorney. I know we heard from you earlier. Anything else to to add? No, Good. thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said enough. Huh? <laughs> okay, and the mayor's office, I don't have anything to add. Um, again, we, we thanked everybody early for all that was going on during Christmas, and we look forward to a great 2024 uh, with our staff. We're excited about moving forward and uh, continuing for great things to keep going in our city, so thank you for all of that. Council members, anything to come? From off. Ike, we will have a service, I guess, going on at uh, Excuse me. Martin Luther King uh, for Martin Luther King Day. There's uh, this is actually three events. I yeah, believe. actually three events. We will have a breakfast to anyone that likes to get out at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning <laughs> and eat a good breakfast. We'll feed you if you come. But, <laughs> however, <laughs> however, it's $15. <laughs> <laughs> and, then the on, and then on Sunday, we'll have an a uh, gospel singing at the King Center. And on Monday, we will have the parade beginning at uh, the park on Ridge Street and continuing to the MLK Center. So, and we'll have a program there. So you're more than welcome to attend. And council, I have tickets. Well, I'm sure we, you we knew you would. Y'all heard sure that. You <laughs> we don't have an option, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, no option on that, huh? Okay, anything else to come before us? Nothing here. If not, we stand adjourned. Thank you for being with us tonight.